Okay, so in this class and probably the next, and maybe one or two more even, we're going to look at search engine optimization. Now, so what's all this all about? Well, search engine optimization is basically designing your website in such a way that it makes it easier for search engines to figure out what your page is about. So, the job of a search engine really is a bit like a dating agency. So there's someone looking for a website just like you. And they have certain things they're looking for. Your website has, has certain features, certain attributes, it's about certain things. And it's the job of the website to put the two, the search engine to put the two of you together. Okay? So, you would like it that your website would appear as high up in the rankings as possible. So, if someone is looking for a website on um, recipes for ice cream um, involving potatoes or something, and you have a website full of um, ice cream recipes that have potatoes in them, you would like to feature like as high up as possible as you deserve in Google. No. An example like that, you're probably the only site in the world, but anyway. No. So most of it's fairly, fairly straightforward, okay? But you could imagine how if there were two shops, two, two bicycle shops in Cork, and you do a search for, you know, bicycle shop Cork, if one appears on the first page, and one appears like, you know, on the fifth page in, the one that appears on the first page in Google is going to score many more customers. It's going to do a lot better online. If it's selling online, it's going to do way more. But even if it's just, you know, bricks and mortar, it's probably going to do a bit better because people are going to know about it. And so, search engine optimization is all about making your website feature as high as, as you can, okay? No, you can't, you can't guarantee that your page is going to come up higher, okay? You can't pay Google to make that happen. You say to Google, listen, Google, you know, it's really, really important that I appear in the front page, you know, can I give you a million dollars? They'll say no. They say, we can sell you a million dollars worth of advertising. So when someone does a search for that, your page will appear there. You know, your site will appear there on the right. But you can't, you can't pay for the placement. Because that's how Google makes its money, by um, having trust with people on the web looking for things that it's going to give them good results. Okay? So the most you can do, really, is make it... Um, make it easier for the website to figure out what, so make it easier for Google to figure out what your website is about. Every time I say Google, I mean search engines in general, okay? So the most you can do is make it easier for them to figure out what your page is about. The, the algorithms that the search engines use to rank pages are partly secret, and they're being tweaked a lot, and if someone figures out a way to kind of cheat them, they, they change them, so it's a bit of an arms race going on there. But um, for the most part, all you can do is, is be honest and upfront. Okay? Now, the most important thing to remember is that search engines find pages. They don't find websites. They find pages. And so each individual page is an optimization challenge in its own right. So like if you have a website and you have 20 pages, you know, and 19 of them, I mean, you know, some pages make it perfectly clear what the site is about. Any individual one of those pages, though, might not have um, that clarity surrounding it. Okay? So, like I said, um, search engines change their algorithms frequently so that people can't manipulate them. There was a time, for example, 
Um, the meta tag was devised in order to help webmasters to explain to search engines what their page was about. So if your page is about a particular topic, you could put key search terms in the meta tags. And that would make it easier for the search engine to figure out what's going on. However, people just abused that. People just put all sorts of crap in the meta tags, which has nothing to do with the page, to try and trick them. So now most search engines just ignore the meta tags because they become useless. I mean, I remember there was a time, I remember seeing a website where um, I, I was looking for something in Cork and it came back with something in Dublin and I was saying, yeah, but I specifically said Cork. I wonder why it gave me Dublin. And when I looked at the HTML, it had in the meta tag every county in Ireland. You know? So it was really just trying to trick the search engine. And I mean, it was no good to them as well. You know, I mean, you know, all I did was use up some of their resources trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. So, black hat search engine optimization versus white hat search engine optimization. So, the best strategy is to make it easier for people who want to find your page to find your page. So, like I said, if you have ice cream recipes, then you want to make it easier for people looking for ice cream recipes to find your page. And that's the most you can do. There are people who will sell you search engine optimization services. And these people may be expert in manipulating the search engines, in tricking them. But for the most part, I think, even if they can get your ranking higher up, over time it will probably fall back down as the search engines adapt and, and modify what they're doing. Um, every now and again, the search engines make big changes to uh, what, what, they, what they do. Like there was a time when um, some websites, like there were these websites that would see what people were searching for in Google. So the most popular searches that week. And then they would pay someone like, you know, $10 or whatever to write an article about the things that are being searched for at the moment. And generally, they were quite poor quality. Not that they were, you know, badly written, but, you know, for $10, what are you going to get? Like, you know, someone paid me $10 to write something, you know, I'd throw it together. Um, and search engines, you know, and just, just to get traffic, just to get traffic, they were doing that. And the search engines kind of wised up to those. So I'm not even sure those people are still in business now, in those particular sites. They would have featured very high up, another way down the back somewhere. Um, so trying to trick them, I think, isn't going to work in the long term anyway. But there are people who will happily sell you those services. Okay. So you can have local search engine optimization and then external search engine optimization. We're mostly interested in local. Okay, we're mostly interested in the kind of things we can do. No. So although much of what Google does is part of its secret sauce that it, it doesn't tell, tell everybody. They have produced a document to give you some guidelines. So if Google tells us that they're using X, Y, and Z to rank pages, you know, that's, that's information we can, we can certainly use. So some things you need to do. So you want relevant text on the page. And also, it has to be text that can be seen. If, for example, you put text really, really tiny, or if you put text just for the search engine, so some people like to um, help out the search engine by putting you know, HTML white text on a white background. So at least the search engine looking at the HTML will see it, but the viewers won't see it. Um, that would trigger uh, a spam detector. So if you have stuff on your page that only the search engine can see, well, that's not much use to the search engine, actually. That makes the search engine think you're trying to trick it. So you want to put relevant 
text on your page. And relevant text is important. If you have very important information in, image in images, well, the search engine can't really see those. If you have important information embedded in uh, flash animation, as to, you know, whiz, bang, wallop, yip de doo search engine probably can't see inside that. If you have really, really important information, and it's a YouTube video on the page, again, search engine isn't going to go into the YouTube video and have a look. If you have really important information, and it's an audio file that plays, again, no go to the search engine. So you want relevant text on the page. And because each individual page is an individual optimization challenge, you may have to be specific about what the page is over and over again. Now, perhaps you can do that in the, the, you know, the title or in the heading or whatever, rather than the actual body, but um, it's important to do that. So search engines index text. This is part of what I was just saying a second ago. If you have tech, if you have information in logos and diagrams, then it'll go to the search engine. It's all about the text. So one thing you can do is you could look at your, you can actually in most browsers, you can turn off the images. And you can even turn off the CSS. So you could look at your page as a search engine would see it. And that can be quite shocking when you look at it and say, okay, this is what a search engine sees. What's a search engine going to think my website is about? And you might find that the, the emphasis is slightly off. If you have a big, huge image right across the page in like headline Las Vegas red flashing text that makes it clear what the page is about in an image and it's not in the text, that's, that's, that's no good. You want to include in your page the obvious words that someone looking for your page would use to search for them. So if it's ice cream recipes, you know, someone looking for ice cream recipes is probably going to search for ice cream recipes. So if you want to be all sophisticated and, you know, make the distinction between ice cream and, and gelato and um, sorbet, you know, that's all very well and good. But if your page doesn't say ice cream, then maybe a person looking for ice cream isn't going to find it. So use the words that someone would use. Okay? So once you know your keywords, then you should try and place them to increase your ranking. So if you know that um, your keywords are ice cream, recipes, um, healthy, um, I don't know, sugar-free. If these are all the things that your, your site is about and the key terms that someone might use to look for them, then you want to place those then in the page and you want to consider where they might go. So we have like our meta tag, even though, like I said, some search engines don't use the, the meta tags anymore. The title is very important. The title of the page is a good clue to a search engine as to what the page is about. Okay. And um, if your header tags your H1, your H2, and stuff. Now you might remember in Soft 6007, your web development fundamentals module, the lecturer banging on about the importance of um, logical layouts like H1, H2, H3. And you see, a search engine when it goes to look at the page. <laughs> is going to have a different experience from a human looking at the page. A human looking at the page will be able to see that if something is big and bold and black, that that's probably a heading. And we can deduce that just from the, you know, typographical conventions that we're used to. A search engine is just going to see text that looks different in different formatting from the others. Whereas text in a H1, that means something. Text in a H2, the fact that it's in a H2 means something. 
the fact that something is in a H3 that's under a H2 that's under a H1 give you some connections between those so if you have like um, recipes in a H3 that's inside in a H2 that says ice cream well then a search engine looking at that can figure out that the H3 is under the H2 it's part of it so that part is about ice cream recipes it can get things from the from the structure similarly so have bold and emphasis also that the file names and the domain names feature a lot so I mean if you have ice cream recipes.com and you have you know dessert ideas.com if someone's looking for ice cream recipes all of the things being equal, the one that has ice cream recipes in the domain name is probably going to score a lot higher. Okay? So what keywords should you include? Right? Well, the keywords should be relevant to your content and they should feature them strongly in your page. It's better as well to focus on a few strong keywords rather than throwing everything in there. But well, if you have a page that you want search engines to find, you want to identify the five or six keywords that that page is about. And then make sure you drive them home. Okay? So, what are the keywords then? Well, they're the words that would best describe your site. Also, you have to consider what kind of words would your clients be typing into a search engine in order to find you. So like if you're offering grinds in a particular subject, you might not want to think of them as grinds. You might think of it more, as, you, do, you don't like the word grinds, you know. You, you think of it more as sort of, you know, academic achievement assistance or something. Well, that's all well and good, but if you don't use the word grinds on your page, then the person who's looking for grinds isn't going to find it. So you have to use the terms and the language of the customers that you're hoping to attract. What search engines do people use to find your competitor's site, for example? What are the popular keywords in the area that you're interested in? So you need to think about those things and identify them. Okay? There are some services even that when given your web page would give you a list of words that people might use in order to find those. So they can be, they can be useful. What's even more useful though is you go to one of your competitor sites and find out what keywords people use to find that. Now, page titles are important. The title tag is telling the world and the search engine what the page is about. Remember, the search engine here is groping in the dark trying to figure out what a page is about. That's a task that it finds very, very difficult. If you've gone to the trouble of putting into the title four or five words that describe the page, well, that's a fairly big whopping clue for the search engine as to what the page is about. Also, titles are usually displayed um, in the search engine when people are looking for things. When you do a search, you know, the title of the page is what shows up in that little snippet of code. So, that can be a big clue to someone to, to click on your page. It needs to accurately describe the page's content. This is something I'm very lazy about doing. I usually try and make the site and then I just you know copy and paste the page you know 20 times and have the different ones. But you need to create a unique title for each page. You know, so you shouldn't say, you know, ice cream recipes and then have, you know, 20 pages all with the title ice cream recipes. 
they should be different. The pages are different, so the titles could be different. Okay? And you want brief but descriptive titles. So the title is, is very important in, in, in the list of things. Okay? It has a fairly big influence on the ranking of your page. And you should also try and include your keywords there if you can. H1, H2, emphasis, and putting your keywords in there, that's important. So if you have headings on your page, if you have recipes in a heading, and the browser, the search engine rather, is looking for pages about recipes, well, if you've devoted a heading to it, that's a good sign that it's looking for. So it's a bit like a, a dating website. You don't know what the person is really, really like, but they have chosen to put certain things out there that they think are important ways to represent them. So like, if someone lists in their, you know, um, if someone has like five, space for five hobbies, you know, and they list, you know, skateboarding as number one, that they've chosen to do that tells you something. You know, if they've specified sense of humor, and if they think that's important, well, that tells you something. No, it doesn't tell you they're any good at skateboarding, and it doesn't tell you that they do actually have a sense of humor. But at least that they have chosen those things to put out there is a sign that maybe they think those things are important. Similarly, if you put some things into headings, well, then that's a sign that those things are important to that page. The fewer things that are covered on a single page, the better. It's tempting to think that a page with a lot of content is more useful than five pages with a fifth each. But no, because if someone is looking for something specific, let's say someone is looking for ice cream recipes, and you have got, you know, 10 ice cream recipes, you put those on a page, you've got 10 um, pasta recipes, you've got 10 pizza recipes, let's say you're, you're, you're thinking like Italian, you've got, um, I don't know, 10 other recipes and something else. You're, you're spreading the focus of your page across many different things. So one page that is all about ice cream recipes is going to rank higher than your page that actually might have more and better ice cream recipes than that other one. But you've, you've, you've diluted the focus of your page. So a big huge page with five topics is not as useful as five shorter pages with one topic each. Because that one topic is going to look like, that one page is going to look like a better match for that specific thing. So that's an important thing to remember. It's just the same point here again. No. You want to avoid using abbreviations? So, you might use CIT on your web pages a lot. If you're CIT, for example, you know what CIT means. Someone looking for Cork Institute of Technology will only find a page if Cork Institute of Technology actually appears on the page. So, if there is a particular if, you're, if your site is about, say, um, I don't know, PCs or something, and on one of the pages, the introductory page, you've specified all of the abbreviations and things that you're going to use. That's all well and dandy, but if, um, if you 
use only those abbreviations or acronyms on a particular page and you don't spell it out, someone who's looking for the longer form won't be able to find it. I'm trying to think of an example there now. Um, obviously, if someone's looking for something to do with USB, I mean, USB is just USB, you know. You wouldn't expect them to use the long form. But CIT, anyway, is a good example there. If you don't say Cork Institute of Technology, the fact that it's one page on the CIT website, you would think, well, of course they know it's Cork Institute of Technology. If it doesn't say it on that one page, that one page isn't going to generate a hit. Okay? Proximity is something that search engines use to score pages also. So if someone wants a list, someone wants pages that have ice and cream and recipes, okay, and it finds a bunch of pages that have those three words, a page that has ice and cream and recipes close together like in the same sentence or in the same paragraph, that's going to rank higher than a page that just has them, you know, dotted about the place. So proximity can be used as well as part of the score. Okay? The number of times then that the terms appear is also going to have an impact. So if two pages are otherwise equal, but one page just uses the term, uses ice and cream and recipes, each one of those words twice. And another one uses ice and cream and recipes ten times. Then the page that has them ten times is going to score higher than the one that only has them once. However, a page that has ice and cream and recipes fifty times in two hundred words is going to look like a page that's just taking the piss. That'll look like a page that was just there, like a trap, just to catch people looking for ice cream recipes. So you might have triggered a, a spam detector there. So you, so you have to be careful. So with any of the search engine optimization techniques, you want to make it easier to find your page. But you don't want to go so far that you might um, think this, you're trying to trick the search engine. Okay? Search terms that appear at the beginning of the page can score higher than those further down. So if you have ice cream recipes at the top of the page, another website with the same content, a web page with the same content, has ice cream recipes at the bottom of the page, the one that has it higher up is going to score higher. The one that has it at the bottom might not even score at all. If it's too far down, the search engine might have gone home when it was indexing that page. Might have gone home already by the time it got to the ice cream recipes. Okay? Now, there's a description meta tag that can be used, okay? And so you want to accurately summarize the page's contents. <coughs> and again, you want a unique description for each page. So if you've gone to the trouble of saying, look, this is what the page is about, Mr. Search Engine, well, that text in there is going to feature fairly prominently in the search engine's interpretations of what the page is about. Remember, the search engine's struggling to figure out what is this page about. Any help you can give it is good. It's also useful to improve the structure of your URLs. This is something I'm very poor at. I often just have, you know, page 001, page 002, page 003, page 004, page 005, page 006, page 007. Thinking up new and interesting and unique names for each page is not something I like to do. But it's really important. Because if the search engine is looking for ice cream recipes, and you've got, you know, um, dansite slash dot com slash ice cream recipes dot html, the, U, the file name is very, very short. You've got very little to play with there. If you've managed to devote three, the three keywords 
and you've used up your file name space with those three keywords, that's a key sign to the search engine that that's a very important feature of that page. Also, URLs are displayed in the search results. So, you know, danssite.com slash icecreamrecipes.html. That's going to look more attractive to click on than dan's page, danssite.com slash page0019.html. Okay. So use words in your URLs instead of numbers. Don't have them too cryptic. You can create a, a directory structure. So if you've got, um, you know, italiancooking.com, you could have, you know, pasta folder, um, pizza folder, ice cream folder, whatever. And then, um, so your ice cream section might have you know italiancooking.com slash ice cream slash healthy recipes dot html or something so have a, have a structure there also you want to provide one version of the url to reach the document for example a lot of the time you can leave out the www so you could have you know um, italiancooking.com or www.italiancooking.com in terms of what a person types in in order to find it, it doesn't really matter. Both will work fine. But if in some of your URLs you're using the www and in others you're not, it may appear that they are two different pages. And so they may appear separately on the fifth page in in the Google search, whereas if they were one page, Together, they might deserve to be on the first page. Again, you're kind of splitting your points between the two of them. So, so that's important. So if the search terms appear in your URLs, your ranking's going to be improved. <coughs> so, you know, best albums of all time is probably going to do better than this example here. And try to only have one URL for each of your pages. Incidentally, the style in the slides, the style change in the slides there doesn't mean anything. It's just I, these are half wrapped from a buddy of mine who teaches something similar. So your domain name can also help. Um, but obviously, if it's, um, if it's too generic, it's not much use. So, you know, bestalbums.com says this is a website, this is a, a curated list of music that says something about it. Location can have an impact. We mentioned this earlier, but um, two sites that are equal in every way, except one is, you know, some site.ie and the other one is some site.com. The some site.ie would rank higher for someone performing that search in Ireland. Because the search engine would have figured out that something that has a .ie has some relationship with Ireland. <coughs> so if, for example, um, your all of your customers are in Ireland. It may make sense to go for a .ie, even though that's more expensive and somewhat inconvenient. Because it may result in your um, pages being ranked higher for people in Ireland. Now, they may be ranked much lower for people elsewhere, but if they're not your customers, you don't care. Do you know? I mean, if you were, um, you know, if you were going on a dating website, it doesn't really matter how you rank to people in, you know, Philadelphia, because you're not interested in anyone in Philadelphia. So you need to consider things like that too. But that would depend very much on the on the business. Now, irrespective of your 
top level domain name, even if you have a .ie, the search engine may also be aware of the physical location of the server. So if I have a .com, but it's hosted physically in the software center in Manhattan Point, then people searching in Ireland or searching in Cork might find that quicker than an equivalent site that's hosted somewhere in Florida. That might or might not be a problem for you. If you're not particularly interested in selling to Irish people, then that difference in ranking isn't going to make much of a, much of a difference. But it may. So it may happen that you not only want a .ie, but that you also want to physically host it in Ireland, which again would probably be more expensive. So depending on who the target audience is, that can have an impact. Obviously, language is also a consideration. Now, it's important to make your site easier to navigate. So from your home page, it needs to be easy to navigate to all of the other pages. You can use um, breadcrumbs for customers. That's where across the top it shows you where you are along the hierarchy. Bread, breadcrumbs aren't a list of all the pages you've been to, like a history, which would actually be, that's what I think breadcrumbs means, you know, where you've been, if you take like Hansel and Gretel. But that told Hansel and Gretel where they had been. It was a copy of their path. Breadcrumbs across the top of a website, though, are where you are in the menu structure. So if you've got, you know, Italian cooking, then you've got um, your pizzas, and then you've got um, vegetarian and non-vegetarian, and then inside in the vegetarian, you might have whatever. You've got a hierarchy there, a directory structure. The breadcrumbs show you where you are in there. Um, could also allow for the possibility of part of the URL being removed. So if someone is in italiancooking.com slash pizzas slash um, vegetarian dot whatever, blah, 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 okay? And Looking at that URL, if they remove part of it and just get um, italiancooking.com slash pizzas slash, that should work. So you should organize it to have a, you know, an index.html in that folder there for that to work. You also want a sitemap, one for users, for the humans to read, but there's also a format for search engines. You can actually put on your website a sitemap for search engines. They go to look there and they can say, okay, now I can see the structure of the site. And again, if that's described properly, it can help them understand the relationship between the pages and perhaps some of the, the, the meaning in there as well. So create a, a hierarchy. Use mostly text for navigation. Because remember, a search engine can't see the contents of graphics. Put a sitemap and have a useful 404 page. 404 is what you get when you type in a URL that is wrong. Most of them just say, um, that doesn't exist, feck off. A useful one might actually look at what was typed in and maybe run a search and say, you searched for, um, you know, you had pizzas in there. These are the pages related to pizzas, or here's a link to the sitemap, or something like that. Um, you only need to submit the home page for your site to a search engine, because if all the links are off that, then that's no problem. You can find those there. And you also want to um, submit the, the sitemap. We might look at the, the format of those. It's important too, I think, to have well-formed HTML or XHTML. It makes it easier to index your site. It also perhaps 
perhaps for some search engines is an indication of the quality. If someone has dodgy HTML, well maybe then it's a bit amateur. Although I remember seeing a video from Google where they actually said, yeah, but, you know, we actually live in the real world and um, not everyone writes perfect HTML and, you know, so what, we get over it. So it may not, um, it may not rank, it may not be as important as your um, HTML lecturers tell you it is. But certainly there may be search engines who use it as, a, as an indication of um, quality. Similarly, of course, with the English, the spelling and the, the grammar. You really, really must use external style sheets for your CSS. If you mix the style information in with the page, it just makes it, it really dilutes everything you've got. Now, you wouldn't dream, of course, of doing it any other way, given that we trained you well last semester. But there are some people who would still mix the content and the style information together, and, and that's not good. So we'll leave it there for today, so I'm Carry on with us the next time. Thank you.